difficult to celebrate the season in a world that can feel overwhelming with problems that seem too difficult to solve. Christmas gives us the opportunity to remember that God's grace is the solution to every problem. And in Jesus Christ is the ultimate expression of God's grace. In every age, the complexities, questions, and difficulties of life all push humankind to respond to them. It is no wonder the faithful look forward with great anticipation to the love of God, made flesh in Jesus Christ. Long before his birth, many prophets knew of and understood Christ's mission. Behold, my soul delighteth in proving unto my people the truth of the coming of Christ. And all things which have been given of God from the beginning of the world unto man are the typifying of him. Yea, my soul delighteth in his grace and in his justice and power and mercy in the great and eternal plan of deliverance from death. For if there be no Christ, there be no God. And if there be no God, we are not. For there could have been no creation. But there is a God, and he is Christ, and he cometh in the fullness of his own time. Transgression cometh the fall, 
which fall bringeth death. Even so, ye must be born again into the kingdom of heaven, of water and of the spirit, and be cleansed by the blood, even the blood of my only begotten, that ye might be sanctified from all sin and enjoy the words of eternal life in, the, in this world and eternal life in the world to come, even immortal glory. And now behold, this is the plan of salvation unto all mankind through the blood of mine only begotten, who shall come in the meridian of time. And things have their likeness, and all things are created and made to bear record of me, both things which are temporal, things which are spiritual, things which are in the heaven, above, and things which are on the earth, and things which are in the earth, and things which are under the earth, both above and beneath, all things bear record of me. Praising God and saying, 
glory to God in the highest, and peace on earth, goodwill towards men.
a beautiful virgin mother, and silent stable animals that had not the power to other the sacredness they had seen. As for Mary, much of what she felt that night, the world would never know. She kept it in her heart where no words were needed. This child was Jesus, the Son of God, the Savior of the world. But right now, he was small, and the night air was cold. She was his mother, and she would hold him. Shepherds soon would arrive, and later wise men from the east. But first and forever, there was just a little family on that silent, still, and holy night.
20 centuries have come and gone, and today Christ is the centerpiece of all human race and leader of all human progress. But the story of Christmas is so much larger than the story of his birth. For he was more than just a boy, a babe in Bethlehem. It is more about his life as the carpenter's son, for he was more than the greatest teacher to ever live. This child was born to be the King of Kings, Lord of Lords, the promised Messiah. In both Gethsemane and on Calvary, he worked out the infinite and eternal atonement for all. Then followed his death and miraculous resurrection. To this end was I born, the Savior fearlessly declared to Pilate. And for this cause came I into the world. His sacrifice was and is the greatest single act of love in all of human history. He is our Savior, the Son of God. The Redeemer of the World. Barukata Shuma Elohenu Malka Olam Hamotzi Laham Minha Arts. Arise, and take the young child and his mother, 
and flee into Egypt, for Herod will seek the young child to destroy him. Yeshua. Bohena. Bohena.
And he shall go forth, suffering pains, afflictions, and temptations of every kind. And this is that the word might be fulfilled, which saith, He will take upon him the pains and the sicknesses of his people. And he will take upon him death, that he may loose the bands of death, which bind his people. And he will take upon on him their infirmities, that the bowels may be filled with mercy according to his flesh, that he may know according to the flesh how to succor his people according to their infirmities. And the Son of God suffereth according to the flesh, that he might take upon him the sins of his people, that he might blot out their transgressions, according to the power of his deliverance. And now behold, this is the testimony which is in me. Down inside each of us, we can all relate a little to Ebenezer Scrooge. 
especially when the hustle and bustle that often accompanies the season, as we rush about with the multitude of shoppers and the large crowds at Christmas time, we're reminded that Bethlehem too was crowded. Just as there was no room in the inn for Mary, many today find it hard to make room for Christ in their daily lives and once a year celebrations. And just as Joseph was forced to take Mary and Jesus and flee to Egypt for their lives, many today flee violence and oppression to try to save their lives. Do we make room for our lives for Christ, infant, the refugee, the radical, the teacher, the advocate, redeemer, savior, or potential for eternal life hinges on our willingness to believe in him and become like him. And he was all these things and more. This Christmas, mend a quarrel. Seek out a forgotten friend. Dismiss suspicion and replace it with trust. Write a letter. Give a soft answer. Forgive an enemy. Forgo a grudge. Apologize. Hug someone tightly. Try to understand. Laugh a little and then laugh a little more. Treat someone to an ice cream cone. Gladden the heart of a child. Welcome a stranger. Speak your love, then speak it again. Even as Christ came to give his life for all of us, so should we strive to open our hearts and give ourselves in love to those who need us. For the Savior set a perfect example for us to follow.
On Friday, December 25th, 1863, Henry Wadsworth Longfellow, as a 57-year-old widower father of six children, the oldest of which had been nearly paralyzed as his country fought a war against itself, wrote a poem seeking a capture, the dynamic and dissonance in his own heart and the word he observed around him that Christmas day. He heard the Christmas bells ringing in Cambridge, Massachusetts, and the singing of peace on earth. But he observed the world of injustice and violence that seemed to mock the truthfulness of this optimistic outlook. The world continues to suffer violence, injustice, and evil, but Jesus Christ has promised that in him we might have peace. He has also asked us to proclaim that peace to the world, just as Henry Wadsworth Longfellow has done.
And now this is the testimony, last of all, which we give of him, that he lives. We know and declare the divine sonship of Jesus Christ and pray that he will be born anew in our heart and in yours as he was born in Bethlehem under the bright Judean stars so long ago. There is no better time than now, this very Christmas season, for all of us to rededicate ourselves to the principles taught by Jesus the Christ. It is the time to love the Lord our God with all our hearts and our neighbors as ourselves. It is well to remember that he who gives money gives much. He who gives time gives more, but he who gives of himself gives all. Let that be the description of our Christmas gifts. May the blessings of the Lord be with you and all your family and friends this Christmas season. And we hope you have been touched by the true Spirit of Christ this evening as you have heard both music and the spoken word in this wonderful birth and life. Please join the choir in singing all three verses of Silent Night, hymn 204.